Uh, my name is Hadassah. Something a lot of people don't know about me is that I survived a domestic abuse situation. Um, it took a long time for me to understand that that's what I was. You know, I'm not a labeler, I don't make labels. Um, but I, my ex was abusive and his father was abusive and his mother was really codependent on the whole situation. I think she'd been abused by her siblings. There were some hints about that kind of behavior, but they never really talked about it. Um, there was a lot of stuff that didn't bother to tell me. <laughs> they kept stuff to themselves. But um, one night, I was driving home after a long work day, and I was a bank teller at the time. <clears throat> My ex wanted to buy some kind of music from some artist or what have you, and I needed gas in the car to be able to get back and forth to work, you know, the commute. So we were getting groceries at Walmart, and this joker just flipped out, right in the aisle, just yelling and gesturing. And you know, he's like six foot six, you know, so there's a lot of him to gesture. And you start gesturing, and you're that big. <laughs> so it made this huge scene. And you know, we want to discuss the unfairness of people staring at us and then giving me dirty looks as if I was at fault when I was just dealing with his misbehavior, the things people assume. But just having to manage another adult who was not behaving like a grown man, you know, that's enough stress as it is. We finally get the groceries and everything, and I get him corralled back out to the car. He takes out this huge hunting flip utility knife while I'm driving. And it was smooth on the tip and serrated um, toward, the, toward the, um, the hinge of it. And it was really ugly, you know. And it says, I'm going to kill myself, you know, let me do what I want. So there's a cop that's facing us. You know, he's about to pass. And we were sitting at a light by then. And I was, had to decide in a split second if I was going to blow my horn and, you know, have my husband arrested or committed or whatever, something, <laughs> or just get some sleep and go to work the next day and I'll make my plan. And I had to factor in so many things, you know, in that 30 seconds of time that I had. You know, we're out here in the country and I'm a young black woman with natural hair and I'm sitting next to this huge irate white dude. <laughs> Do I really want to spend the next two hours dealing with cops who may or may not believe what I'm saying, your side with him, you know? And I still, no matter what, I'm gonna need money to get away from here. I can't afford to miss work. I can't afford to be out. So, um, I pull over uh, to the nearest parking lot and I looked at him. It was about a block from where we were living at the time, but I just wanted to make sure I'd handled it before we got home. And so I'm just staring at him for a minute until he could calm down enough for me to speak. I'm like, what kind of wacker tries to slit their own damn throat? I mean, my mom is an insurance agent. Do you know the likelihood of people slitting their throats as a means of suicide? It is near zero. That crap hurts. And uh, we're programmed not to like pain. So you would stop about halfway if you got that far because you know you're a painless. They'll not have to take your crazy ass to get stitches at hospitals, and you have to explain it, and I'd still be up half the night, and you still wouldn't get the music you wanted. So what is the damn point? <laughs> You're not going to manipulate me. I am exhausted. I need sleep. I need to get to work. I am not done with this tonight. And what kind of husband doesn't make sure his wife has gas to get to work? You don't even drive. You know, so I'm having the whole conversation. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call it conversation and, and everything. Never mind, you know, the whole notion of, oh, I love him, I don't want him to hurt himself, you know. That was a given, but the only thing that people really and truly cannot rely on is cold logic and at work. I still made sure that I knew where the knife was when he went to sleep, <laughs> but I know I couldn't keep every sharp object out of his hands or rely on his sanity to keep me safe when I close my eyes at night. So I started planning my escape at that point. Uh, we moved back to my hometown eventually, away from his family. You know, they had a fit because they had been trying to isolate me. And so I flipped the script. And then, you know, one thing after another, I steadily distanced myself and took step after step to kind of be more independent until we reached a separation agreement. He went back to that with his parents. I was the only one working and paying bills at the time. And it wasn't until I had a non-emergency policeman there um, 
So nothing would happen when he came to pick up his stuff the last time his final move out. You know, and I described the fits and the manipulative tactics and, you know, the occasional blows. And he's listening, the policeman is listening, and he says, you know, man, we have a strict policy about domestic violence. You know, we don't always assume that just because we can't see blows that he hasn't hit you. You know, especially with someone who's brown, and he was a white guy. He's like, especially with someone who has, you know, brown skin, because you may not always see the scars on someone who has brown skin. I mean, he was so compassionate. And it wasn't until he said domestic violence, you know, the whole label, that I understood that I was in the category. I just hadn't thought about the fact that I was fitting into the domestic violence category. I was too busy trying to survive. And you know, people will judge you. That's the problem. It's not that people don't want to leave an abusive situation. It's that they don't always recognize where they are yet. <laughs> they don't recognize that they're in a domestic violence situation. They don't categorize it that way yet. And so I had to understand that I didn't need anyone else's permission to protect myself and to save myself and to be loved properly. I decided that that was something that I was going to have for myself.